on 30th June 1982. Three High Court judges and a retired army officer were adopted from their homes and burned into ashes at the Bundazi military camp during a night curfew. These judges are today referred to as the Mataya of the law and have their statues in front of the Supreme Court. In this video, we shall examine the circumstances under which these people were murdered, who the culprits were, and why they were murdered. Do not forget to leave a comment and subscribe to this channel. On the eve of 1982, Ghana was hit with another coup. Jerry John Rawlings had overthrown President Hillary Liman of the People's National Party PNP, in a bloodless coup. Dr. Hillary Liman had been in office for just 27 months. In a statement, Rawlings said that a holy war was necessary due to the PNP's failure to provide effective leadership and the collapse of the national economy. Jerry John Rawlings then formed the Provisional National Defense Council PNDC, and ruled Ghana from December 1981 to January 1993. In less than a year into the PNDC's regime, 30th June 1982, Ghana was again hit with another sad news. This time it was not a coup. But the country woke up to the news of the gruesome murder of three high court judges and a retired army officer. These high court judges were Cecilia Corantin, Frederick Opoku Sakodie, and Kwejo Ejei Ejapon. The retired army officer was Sam Aqua, who was then the head of personnel at Ghana Industrial Holding Corporation, Gihok. The reasons for their murder was unknown. Cecilia Corantin Addo was adopted and murdered in secret by some unknown men on 30th June 1982, along with the two other Supreme Court justices, Frederick Opoku Sakodie and Kojo Eje Ejapon, and the retired army officer Sam Aqua. The murder took place at the Bundasi military shooting range in the Accra Plains during the hours of a night time curfew. The unknown men had taken their captives to the Bundasi military firing range and executed them. The murderers carried along a gallon of fuel patrol with which they set fire to the bodies to cover up their crime. But historical accounts have noted that it rained that day, so the bodies did not burn as the murderers had wanted. Their charred bodies were discovered in the same location the following day. Following intense pressure on Rawlings and the PNDC, a special investigation board, SIB, was formed by the government to investigate the murderers. The SIB was headed by former Chief Justice, Mr. Justice Azukrepi, to unravel the mystery. In their report, the SIB established that the adoption and murder were a plot hatched with the connivance of members of the PNDC. These were Captain Amedeka, Tony Tepo, Zandu and Heckley, as well as ex PNDC member Amatekwe. The SIB also found out that the entire plot was masterminded by Captain Kojuchikata, a PNDC member in charge of national security. However, the PNDC rejected that particular aspect of the report and let Captain Chikata and four others of the hook for lack of evidence. In 1992, the independent newspaper 
reported findings of the SIB's inquiry in Ghana, which it said had recommended the prosecution of 10 people for the murder, including Ghana's head of national security at that time, Kodo Chikata. Chikata, who was Rawlinson's right-hand man, filed a defamation lawsuit against the independent on 26 March 1993 which he agreed to drop after the independent published a correction statement in September 1998 in which they clarified that they had not intended to suggest that Chikata was guilty of the crime. In four of the nine suspects were jailed when on 19 June 1983 there was a jailbreak at the Insawam Medium prisons and the Asha Fort prisons. Captain Amedeka escaped from captivity and has since not been seen. But his three accomplices, Tony Tepo, Asanzu, and Heki, as well as ex PNDC member Amate Kwe, were executed by a firing squad. Before his death in 2020, Mr. Rawlings always insisted that before Amate Kwe was executed, he confessed at stake to forcefully accusing Mr. Chikata of involvement in the execution of the charges. People still continue to level allegations against me as a conspirator in the crime to murder the judges and Major Alco. Was it possible for the four young soldiers Corporal Slams Corporals to undertake that major activity without authority from the superior authority, without orders or instructions from the superior authority. Could they have done that on their own initiative? My dear General, one of them, without anybody's authority, killed my relative. The, the, those young soldiers were not taking official orders to go and kill people. They were not taking official orders. Would you, wouldn't they, the circumstances have been different? Your uncle, what? sorry to, I said, wouldn't the circumstances have been different? Um, I don't know the sort of uh, reasons why they would have killed your uncle. I don't know. Uh, but. Whether they knew him or there was some sort of personal decision, I don't know. We don't, I don't know the circumstances. But here we have the judges and our own colleagues and upper, whom they didn't know. They didn't know where they lived. They had no sort of relationship with them. They bore them no grudge. Could they have done that on their own initiative? In the evidence of the ISID, they all stated that they were doing what they did under the instructions of Ahmad Kui. That is what all of them said in the evidence before the ISRB and before the tribunal. Um, Ahmad Kui was a member of the PNDC, yes. That is what they all said. Did he hold any special uh, position? He was a member of the PNDC in charge of TUC affairs. So does it mean any member of PNDC can get hold of any of the soldiers and give them orders to do anything? That is what they did. I'm not saying that that is legal. That is what they said they did. Well, the unfortunate thing is that um, they are gone. Amatekwe is gone and uh, it's difficult to... Um, but it sounds a, a little bit... Uh, difficult to understand the system whereby any member of government could just order soldiers to you know undertake such my dear general that is why Matikwe was prosecuted and executed it was not right for him to have done what he did it was not a matter of system Matikwe was responsible for the crime he committed with America and the others. Even though the reasons for the murder of these people are unknown, 
Let's dive a little into the life of these people and that may give us a clue to why their lives were taken away from them. As for Major Sam Aqua, his crime may have been a signed letter that led to the dismissal of some agitating workers, including a PNDC member, Amato Kwe, who became a suspect in the murder. These members were dismissed after invading and destroying properties at Ghana's Parliament House. Major Sam Aqua at that time was a director of personnel at the Ghana Industrial Holding Corporation, KHOC. What about Judge Cecilia Corantin? In 1980, Cecilia ruled in favor of a businessman named Mr. Shackford, who had been detained during the 1979 revolution led by Derry John Rawlings. Cecilia held that there was no justification for the detention and therefore directed his release. Again, Cecilia was the first judge to have questioned the transitional provisions of the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC, inserted in the 1979 constitution, and she set free an AFRC convict. She also decided a case involving the routing workers of Ghana Industrial Holding Corporation, Giho, who attacked parliament in Ghana's Third Republic. Amato Kwe, one of the leaders of the routing workers, subsequently became a member of Mr. Rawlings' Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC, which was the ruling party at the time of Cecilia's murder in 1982. Amata Kwe was later tried and convicted of his role in Cecilia's murder. What about Judge Frederick Sarkodie? Little is known about Judge Frederick Sarkodie. As a judge, he was known to have advocated for the cause of women prior to the existence of the Interstate Succession Law of 1985, which was enacted to protect a married spouse under customary law. What about Judge Koju E.J. Ejapon? Again, little is known about Judge E.J. Ejapon. However, in May 1979, he was appointed chairman of the Committee of Enquiry that investigated the case of the Accra Railway shooting incident that saw the death of a second-year student of Commonwealth Hall. University of Ghana by a police. In his report in June 1980, he lamented the unwarranted use of ammunition by the police in a rather peaceful student's demonstration. Forty years later, Ghana has still not recovered from this mystery. Ever since the incident occurred, the nation has not had a closure on the turn of event of this particular day. Several people have accused the late former president, Jerry John Rawlings, as the mastermind behind these murders. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and share your view on this issue. share your views your comments you know uh, there are so many issues regarding some of the events uh, that has taken place uh, in the political history of Ghana whatever question that you may have uh, concerning the video or the political history of Ghana um, feel free to uh, comment um, or ask in the comment section and we will be glad to you know, reply and respond to you. Um, have a nice day and uh, do not forget to subscribe to our channel.